the bug out event is coming back to Pokemon Go starting August 10th. And uh, yeah, with that, we get the debut of Grubbin's evolutionary line. We got the Charger Bug and the Vika Volt. And then, of course, we have Mega Caesar. In this video, I'm going to let you guys know just how good these Pokemon are in raids and in PvP. And I'm also going to give you some details about the bug out event. Of course, you can check this out on the Pokemon Go Live page as well. Uh, linked in the description, of course. So yeah, bug out event starting August 10th all the way till uh, August 16th. And yeah, the new Pokemon debuting, we got Grubbin, evolves into a Charge Bug for 25 candy. And then for 100 candy, uh, when you're near an active magnetic lure, mind you, uh, then you can evolve into Vika Volt. Then we got Mega Caesar coming to the raid scene, uh, debuting there. So really powerful Pokemon for the Mega Master League PvP and not too shabby for raids either. A collection challenge. And then this weird like group bonus that just seems goofy. Uh, I guess if three or more trainers do an in-person raid, so you know you got Johnny with the 10 phones going on, he can take care of that for you. Um, these certain bug type Pokemon will spawn for 15 minutes within a 300 meter radius of the gym. So yeah, uh, August 10th, Wurmple, the most important bug type. And then August 11th, Caterpie, unfortunately without a cowboy hat. And then August 12th, we have Spinarak, arguably the most meta of the group. And then the rest kind of don't matter. Uh, maybe Weedle, because Beedrill's also pretty meta as well. So yeah, but I don't know. This really isn't an incentive for me to do in-person raids. It's more of an incentive to play in high population areas where people may already be doing these raids anyways to reap the benefits. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of this current trend of adding content to Pokemon Go, like adding bonuses for trainers, because it is such a strange task for some people. And then when you have like a big city or a high traffic area, um, people just get the benefits regardless. So it's just it's just goofy. I don't know. I don't hate it, but I don't really love it. You know, uh, then we got bonuses to XP for catching using a nice throw, etc. Um, some surprise encounters, oh man. And then we got the wild encounters, right? So a bunch of bug type Pokemon. And if you're lucky, you might get uh, these shiny guys too. If I'm lucky, I might get a not bad PvP IV Scorpy because uh, all my Drapions are awful. All of them, even the shadow ones. So hoping and praying on that. Then when it comes to the raids, uh, nothing too exciting going on here except for Mega Caesar and arguably Genesect if you're into that. And they got field research task encounters. Wouldn't you guess it? More bugs. So with that out of the way, let's talk about how uh, how good these boys are going to be in the meta. So starting out, we got Charge Bug in the Great League here. The mid evolution for the Grubbin into the Vika Volt doesn't do anything in raids, um, but it's pretty decent for Great League PvP. It's got the same type as Galvantula, and you can see here it's got a higher stat product than Galvantula. So that just means it's better, right? Uh, well, unfortunately, Charger Bug does have a notably worse move pool. It's got Spark instead of Volt Switch. Generally, you want the higher energy gaining move here with the good damage, which is Volt Switch. Uh, instead of Lunge, we got X Scissor. And, uh, well, they both got Discharge, so that's okay. But not getting Lunge is a pretty big hit. And then for a side kind of coverage move, we got Crunch, which is pretty nice. Um, but Galvantula also, you know, it's got Cross Poison, it's got the Energy Ball, and then it's got the Bug Buzz. So overall, I'd say Galvantula does have the significantly better moveset and is still significantly a way better Mon than Charger Bug is. Um, but in certain, like, limited formats or something like that, you know, in, like, a cup format or maybe in a very hyper-specific team, uh, Charger Bug might have some interesting like side grade utility because it is thicker if you go through a bunch of matrix simulations you will see that there are wins that charger bug can get that galvantula doesn't get but for the most part galvantula is winning against a lot more things and has a lot more utility uh, mostly due to the lunge there so charger bug very okay um probably worth keeping your eyes out for like a good pvp iv1 just in case then next up, we got the Vika Volt. Uh, Vika Volt, also not very good in raids. When it comes to Great League PvP, it has a lower stat product than Galvantula. And it's got the uh, same exact moveset as Charger Bug, except for one key difference, and that is it also has Mud Slap for some reason. So when it comes to being a side grade to Galvantula, Vika Volt, more often than not, is going to be a lot worse 
than Galvantula is, and will probably definitely be worse than what Chargebug is. However, the Mud Slap does give it an interesting niche kind of utility. When it comes to being an electric type with Mud Slap, that means Vikavolt could possibly function well in cups that feature electric type Pokemon, type cups, you know, uh, because it can Mud Slap down opposing electric type Pokemon. Now that's not the most impressive thing ever, but in some cups we have seen that fast moving stuff down with an aggressive, super effective or neutral fast move can be really effective. So there is always the chance that Vikavolt can function in that role. Another Pokemon that has this going on is Heliolisk. And uh, just comparing it up against some electric type Pokemon, and I also threw in Vigoroth um, because I know the Holiday Cup features electric type Pokemon and Vigoroth is pretty good there too. Uh, you can see that Vikavolt is getting a couple more wins than what Heliosk is getting. It's getting uh, one more win. In fact, I think that one more win is it beating Heliolisk, right? Uh, with the Mud Slap, X Scissor, and Crunch moveset. So, in a vacuum, it kind of stands to reason that Vikavolt may be better than Heliosk when it comes to the anti electric type as an electric type role. I mean, of course, you do have the, uh, the, where are you, Stumpfisk, the Unovan Stumpfisk, which beats them as well, but it's doing that with charge move damage, not aggressive fast move damage. In fact, this is the zero shield situation, so if you pump it up to the two shield situation, then you can see that, oh man, they're both still all losing to it. Um, but if Vikavolt doesn't throw any charge moves and has an attack breakpoint, which is really slight, um, we're probably all going to get the attack breakpoint, it's not even worth thinking about, uh, well then you could just completely mud slap it down to precisely 100 energy and then you can unload that energy on the next thing in of course it is going to be a two shield versus zero shield situation so probably not the best spot to be in but heliolisk can't do that so so yeah haha vika volt better anti-electric electric type possibly but yeah overall if you miss out on getting a good iv for this thing I wouldn't worry about it. This is meme to the max. Then finally, we have Mega Caesar, a Pokemon that is actually good in raids. So when it comes to being a bug type attacker in the raid scene, you can see that Mega Caesar is beneath the Mega Heracross, the Mega Beedrill, and the Mega Pinsir. So that's not that's not very good. But you can see that it's got more tankiness than the Mega Beedrill. So if you sort it by DPS to the third power times TDO, which is a uh, you know, a better metric for a Pokemon's overall goodness in raids. You know, it does the high DPS, but it does have a little bit of meat on it. Um, you can see Mega Caesar does outpace the Mega Beedrill, but we are still behind Mega Heracross and Mega Pinsir, which haven't been released yet. So as far as like being a raid specific Mega Pokemon, you might be better off holding out for the bigger boys. And when it comes to the steel side of the force, um, basically the same thing can be said there too. Uh, Mega Caesar definitely isn't the king. Even Mega Agron beats it out in terms of DPS to the third power times CDO. But Mega Caesar does have slightly higher DPS in it, so you will do a little, like more damage with the Mega Caesar compared to the Mega Agron. Uh, but one day, Mega Metagross will come out and then uh, completely usurp the Mega Caesar. So this doesn't sound too great for Mega Caesar, uh, but where you do like end up being kind of mediocre in raids. Definitely not a bad Pokemon for raids, but not the best Pokemon for raids, right? Uh, you can make up for PvP, and Mega Caesar is actually one of the better Pokemon for the Mega Master League meta, rivaling Gyarados, potentially. So looking at the Mega Master League meta here, uh, using three different moveset variations of Mega Caesar because, you know, X Scissor Night Slash is, you know, the spam moveset, overall pretty good. Iron Head can pack a little bit more punch because you got, you know, the heavy Iron Head attack. And you got Return for the even bigger neutral nuke that doesn't get resisted as much as Iron Head would, right? And then comparing it against the Mega Gyarados. And then uh, you can see here that between them, uh, it looks like Mega Caesar in the one shield situation specifically here, and in other shield situations you'd find too if you want to run this yourself on PV Poke, uh, it is getting more wins than the Mega Gyarados. Now, more wins doesn't always mean better Pokemon. It really depends on what those wins are. 
Um, but right off the bat, you can see that the majority of Pokemon right here on the screen that Mega Caesar is managing really well are Pokemon that Mega Gyarados does poorly against. So you got the Mega Venusaur, my poor friend, uh, you know, the fairy type Pokemon and like the dark type Pokemon. Mega Caesar managing them a lot better. So in the Mega Master League meta, theoretically, if people are packing their teams with these Pokemon, uh, Mega Caesar would be a nasty surprise for them. Uh, but you can see that Mega Gyarados kind of covers the Mega Caesar as well. You know, Zekrom, Mega Caesar doesn't deal with that super well. Uh, Mega Gyarados can manage the Zekrom. Now, of course, this is great. Once again, you know, those wins are nice wins. How does it do against the Mega Gyarados itself? And you can see that Mega Caesar, with the pure spam moveset here in the One Shield scenario specifically, is able to overcome the Mega Gyarados. So, watch out Mega Gyarados, right? And it's not really losing to a whole lot of other stuff too. I know that the uh, Landurises uh, made a pretty good appearance in the Mega Master League meta, also managing them. So, how the meta was... I feel like Mega Caesar is going to be a pretty great, powerful addition to this situation. One place it struggles a bit is going to be up against the Dialga, but Dialga didn't make a really good showing, if I recall correctly, in the Mega Master League meta, so it might not be that big of an issue. And then if Mega Caesar does start to rise up in value, as I talked about in my previous Mega Master League meta videos, Mega Charizard Y is already baseline really good in the Mega Master League. If Mega Caesar stocks rise up, you know, Mega Charizard why stocks might be rising with it. Then switching over to the two shield scenario, you can see that Mega Caesar is able to consistently overcome Dialga then. So the Dialga matchup isn't super bad for it, even though you do lose the one shield scenario, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, but yeah, still beating Mega Gyarados with the Spamage moveset. Honestly, it's just the X scissors. So if you do want to run without the Night Slash, then that's, that's like the golden ticket to beating Gyarados here, right? But yeah, so here I got Iron Head with Night Slash and then uh, Return with Night Slash simmed. But I think X Scissor could be pretty competitive against it as well, especially if you consider all the Mega Gyaradoses that could be running around. I think Iron Head, for the most part, from what I've seen from the simulations, underperforms a bit. So I think it'd come down to using Return or uh, the double spam moveset. Return does pack a nice neutral punch against, you know, like Kyogre here. Can't beat it otherwise. And then you've got... Uh, other Pokemon too, like Zekrom. Hey, now you have an out to Zekrom, right? I think Palkia too, even? No, okay, we still lose to Palkia. Anyways, Mega Caesar is looking pretty hot. I wouldn't power it up myself because I wouldn't power up anything for the Mega Master League meta because it's a level 50 meta, which is complete garbage. But if you are into that, it's looking pretty good. So that's all I gotta say right now about the bug out event. If you got any questions on this content, of course, comment below. Let me know what's up. I'll be happy to help you out. And if you enjoyed this kind of content, you want to see more like it, well, make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips. Swag Tips. I'd also like to give a special shout out to these Patreon supporters. If you want to support Swagman on Patreon, link in the description. Now, when it comes to uh, the evolutions of, I don't even know what that thing is called. I just know it evolves into Charge a Bug and Beak Volt. I honestly can't remember its name. But yeah, when it comes to the bug out event, uh, we got Grubbin. Grubbin, that's its name.